Time now for the RV Podcast Interview of the Week. Interesting, entertaining, and helpful information about the RV lifestyle. Here's Mike with this week's interview. We have a real treat for you this week in our interview of the week section. It's uh, with a couple uh, named Robert and Julia, and they are pioneering the use of what we're calling a new class of RVs, tiny homes. You all know about the tiny home movement, the miniature homes that are built with such love and precision around uh, the country. There's a whole industry that has risen uh, up about that. but. We have noticed this summer, and I bet some of you have seen this as well, in some of the RV places we travel, in RV campgrounds, tiny homes. People are actually towing them and using them as an RV. Well, the couple that we're going to meet this week have taken the art of tiny homes, turned into RVs to a whole new level, and they've got some big plans. We think that you're going to enjoy them very much. So, without any Further ado, let's bring them on the program. From their tiny home in, I believe you're in New Jersey, is uh, Robert and Julia. Thank you guys so much for uh, being a part of the uh, podcast and our video. How are you? We're doing great. We're doing Thank great. you for Thanks. having us. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. Now, you are in what we're calling the new class of RV, the tiny home. Tell us where you are in your RV right now, in your uh, tiny home. What room are you in? We're actually sitting in the lounge area, but as in, as in most of these tiny homes or even RVs, I think, you know, it's multi-purpose. So this is our, our lounge uh, in the lounge configuration, if you will, with a small table. We can lift that up into a dining table, so then it becomes a dining room. And then at night, we lower it down and it becomes a bedroom. A guest bedroom. Yep. What gave you the idea to do a tiny home? Do you want to start well, off? Yeah, sure. Um, we, uh, when we vacation, we usually vacation for a week or two. And um, we really don't get the feeling, if you will, of the community. Um, we wanted to uh, build our next home in a spot where we would feel most comfortable, have the kids come over, be a destination. And we don't didn't know where exactly that would be. So we thought... How about if we had a tiny home where we would be able to travel the United States and uh, determine where would our destination be? So that's how we really came about. You know, why, why, why did you get a traditional RV? Well, I mean, again, and, and, and I think we wanted sort of the comforts of home, to be honest. Uh, so where i mean there are fabulous rvs don't don't get us wrong i mean and, and there's some that are just extravagant and and very comfortable and so forth but they're also extremely expensive uh we felt we wanted to build something that was uniquely ours uh something that we could put in all of the the things that we felt were important to us uh we we also did not want to compromise just because we went to a tiny house or, or a small little, you know, an RV type. So we put all the comforts of home. I mean, we, we have a full gourmet kitchen, sub zero wolf, uh, steam ovens. We have radiant heated floors. We have a wood stove. We, you know, we got all washer and dryer, dishwasher. You know, we got everything that we would want in, in a, a regular home. Regular homework. I mean, in a luxury condo, to be honest. I mean, that's yeah, what it feels exactly. like. And also, this project was truly a project that we built together. So it was quite an experience and truly enjoyed all of it. But um, we wanted something where we would be able to do together, and this was perfect. Let's describe the tiny home. Now, you're going to provide us some video, and we're going to show that, and uh, they'll find that in the podcast show notes and, of course, on our YouTube channel. But it's a unique tiny home. Uh, it folds up, and it looks kind of like, shaped like a, like a traditional trailer. Uh, but then you open it and describe it for our, uh, our viewers and our listeners. Yeah, absolutely. So, so it, it, as you said, it is, it is based on a traditional trailer, gooseneck or, or a fifth wheel type trailer. So it, it is 26 feet on the base and then 
we have an eight foot overhang, if you will, or, or and that's where we're sitting in right now. Um, but the, the, the thing that you mentioned, the, the sort of fold out is one of the things that we really wanted to do when we designed this was to make the kitchen the heart of the home. Uh, and so that's really center of our, of our tiny house. And because of course we are limited by the width, which is eight and a half feet, so you can pull it down the road, we needed some way to expand that. And, and that's where we uh, searched far and wide, to be honest, to find, uh, and, we, and we incorporated bifold windows and doors uh, so that we could open it up. We open it up into our deck, which is also portable and we can take it with us. So that's another eight feet wide. So now we have really a 16 by 16 foot kitchen uh, or an entertainment spot with a bar top and, and a full island, if you will. And, and I mean, it's fabulous. It, yeah. it, it really is. And, and uh, I'm sure the, the, the photos and the pictures don't do it justice, but even looking at the video and uh, the photos, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Up on top, you have a unique feature as well. Yeah, we have, we have a, um, a deck on top as well where we could go at night, uh, sit there during the day or at night, but wonderful to look at the stars uh, when you're up there. Um, so yeah, it, we utilize that space as well. And, and it's, got, it's got, we basically have a, right here from the, from, the, um, from the lounge, we have a floating stairway that basically goes up through a rooftop window uh, that we can just walk right up onto the deck. So it's and, sort of all perfect. And describe the bedroom. What's the bedroom like? Oh, the bedroom, very comfy. <laughs> um, but uh, we have a queen mattress in there. Um, it's on the loft. Lots of storage, both on the floor and on the wall as well, cabinets. Um, and it's basically also a my uh, office. Uh, on the end of the bedroom, there's a desk that we will be putting there that will be my office as well. So it's, again, multi-purpose. And what do you use to tow this down the road? Well, that's, that, that, was, uh, that has been an, an evolution. <laughs> we, we, uh, we started off uh, you know, thinking, okay, we need a, we need a dually, a, a large 350, 3500 you know, type of, of a vehicle. Um, and uh, we could probably do that with that. Uh, but as we started to do more research, we came across this whole idea of an HDT or uh, heavy, heavy duty truck. Uh, and we are now, we haven't got it yet, but that's our next step in our, in our process. We are going to get a Volvo Semi. Uh, and we, we did invest in, um, we saw a lot of people having smart cars, right? And we thought, that's, that's a great idea. Um, we didn't think that was going to be really, to be honest, feasible from a comfort perspective because they look so tiny. So we went out one day and just looked at them and absolutely were Very shocked. I mean, super comfortable. Spacious. They're, they're super safe uh, in that they're actually a, a, a five-star crash rating because they're built like a race car with a cage in it. And, and we even went all electric because as, as you may have, Team, we had uh, we are full off grid, if you will. We have we have uh, 1,800 watts of solar panels on the roof, and um, we actually charge the smart car from the those solar panels as well. So you know, and that's just for you know running back and forth to the store or to a restaurant whenever we park somewhere. But I don't know, it, it's great. So yeah, you're going to. Tow the, the tiny home with a Volvo semi truck, semi tractor trailer, and yep. you're going to tow a smart car behind the nope. tiny home. Yeah. It, it, it has a garage. Yeah, so the, <laughs> so the semi, the semi will have a, a ten foot little little because the smart car is so so small, right? So we're gonna we're gonna have a ten foot little little uh, garage, if you will, at the back, right behind the, the cab of the semi and uh, that's where we're going to drive in the, uh, the smart car many people put the smart car sideways we've seen that a lot yeah uh, 
we honestly, because we're going to be gone for a long time, uh, you know, that's the plan. Uh, we needed a garage. I mean, what house doesn't have a garage and all the tools and all the crap you have? So we needed a garage anyway. So why, why not do it that way? This is amazing. So it, I suppose that makes a lot of sense because instead of the, the sleeping cab part that they have for the driver, you just turn that truck driver bedroom into a garage. Yeah, yeah I think it, it yeah. basically so. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 you can't quite turn it all around that way, but, but yes. All right, let me ask you another couple of questions. How, how long did it take you to build this? You guys did all of this yourself. You must have gone through some training, attended some seminars. Other folks who are thinking about building a tiny home and using it as an RV, what advice? It was, uh, it, it took longer than, than we thought. Expected, yeah. for sure. We, we were quite excited in the beginning and, and uh, we, uh, we, you know, we've done a little remodeling at the house, maybe do a little projects here and there. And then we did take a uh, weekend uh, seminar on how to build a tiny house, uh, which taught us a lot about the structural integrity requirements. Because, I mean, it's really hurricane forces when you're driving down the road. Right. right. So right. it it needs to it needs to, to be uh, pretty tight. Yeah, pretty tight. And um, we did a lot of research and a lot of planning, a lot of design work before we even started uh, to making sure that it all could fit together and it could work together. Um, and then, you know, like I said, we were excited in the beginning. We started in December of 2017, and we said, "Oh yeah, we're going to be done in April. Get ready." We're going off this summer. Uh, that was April 2018, not 2019. <laughs> so, you know, it took us, you know, a lot longer. And, and you know, because we never built before, we, we sometimes we had to do something. And then we realized, you know what, it was probably a better way of doing it. Take that out, put it back in again. And also nothing is standard, right? Everything is tailored. So um, everything had to be done from the very beginning. The, the cabinets, the everything. So um, it did take some time, but the whole process was very educational, um, a very, uh, it, was, it was great because we did it together um, and it, it, it just worked out very well. I'd rather it take longer and do it right than a short amount of time and not do it the right way. Now, you, you said earlier on, Robert, when I asked you about a traditional RV, you said that cost was a factor. What, what did this end up costing you? I mean, you have yeah. spared nothing in terms of uh, excellence yeah. on the inside. Exactly. We, yeah, I think we, we probably... We went overboard, for yeah. sure. <laughs> we went overboard, but, yeah. but also the quality. I yeah. mean, there, There's know, nothing in here that I wouldn't put in a, in a regular house in and in a top and up. So, you know, our... Our cost of materials and other things were a little bit north of a hundred. Well, that's not much for what he, I mean. Well, it's, it's a hundred. It's a hundred thousand dollars for a new Class B van, and up above that, most of them are are even more than that. And yeah, so yeah, uh, it's obviously not costing in the effect all of the labor and all of the work that yeah. you put it. But exactly. the. The main point is, is that this is not a pie in the sky project, that this is reachable for a lot of people who may Absolutely. want to I mean, and, and even, even if you're not, if you don't, if you don't want to jump into building it yourself, I mean, the good part is that there are, the, this whole industry has, has really grown and there's a lot of, of very reputable, I mean, there's also maybe not some not so but there's, there's some really good builders that will take your plans and your input and make you a custom home or make the shell and you finish the inside. I mean, there's a lot of options mm -hmm. there that, that we see people doing that, that makes this, I think, a very, like I said, very viable option, quite honestly. And, it, you know, this is fully insulated. Like I said, we have radiant heated floors. We have uh, full uh, foam insulation in the walls. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, we have double and triple pane windows, the whole, you know, and, and uh, an air conditioner heater and the wood stove and so forth. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a four season place for sure. Now, you're about, you got it basically done. You're waiting for the, the, the tow vehicle, but 
when do you start? And Julia, tell us where you're going. So um, hopefully we'll start in the spring, we're hoping, right? <laughs> in the spring of uh, 2020. And um, I would like, or we would like to go to a very picturesque place to be the first, um, the first destination, whether it be in Vermont or Maine or, you know, lots of mountains, lakes. Um, so that's where I think we would be heading off first. And you plan to visit most of, of, uh, of the U.S. or North America? Yes. Where uh, the plan is to go to each state, um, 48 lower states, to um, stay in that particular state a month at a time so that we can explore it, um, write about it, experience it, and, um, and then move on to the next one. So uh, each state a month. Wow. Well, we're going to use as many images as we can get from you on all of this. I can't wait to meet you out on the road. But as we end this interview, tell our uh, audience where they can find out more about you guys and how they can keep up with your plans to travel about with your tiny home. Absolutely. We, mm -hmm. we, uh, we have, uh, if you remember this, tiny living, living large, all one word, tiny living, living large. So two living in the middle. Uh, and we are, that's our blog. Dot com. Yeah, dot com on the blog site. That's also our handle on Instagram and on Facebook. Well, we will put those links in the show notes for this episode. And uh, I want to thank you for uh, sharing your vision with us and getting us all excited about, uh, about uh, tiny living and living large. Uh, Robert and Julia, you've been great guests. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Mike. Bye-bye.